for saying I'm, a, I'm telling him I'm a gay female. After multiple attempts to put my hand on his penis, I get up and say I have to pee, and immediately start to get dressed and make assertions that I have to be leaving soon. I have no intention. I had no intention of being in a business meeting with this man after the shock and humiliation I felt at the time. A crowd of people, they hear and you left and got in a room. A crowd of people right there, you got in a room. And if in that room, if outside you was kissing the man and giving you a blow jab in front of everybody, and in that room you said no and he forced himself on you, is rape. That's how the system is. I was not pleased that I wanted to leave, but I was now fully clothed with my bag and phone ready to go, so he gets stressed. I see him reach over and retrieve a glock under the pillow and he forced me to lay on. And as he forced me to lay on as he did the deed. I scoffed at this because I knew he carried a firearm but did not know that it was under the pillow. I didn't wait for him to leave me out to start. Who is this guy? Why now? Why a couple days after Congress when he definitely opened up? What, what, what happened? What happened? What motivates it now? The greatest. Um... Well, uh, I think he is now on sort of, sorry, I don't know the terminology, but he's on the ruling party committee. I think he was recently elected. So I, I'd like to hear your response. Uh, um, sorry, your first question was why I uh, wanted to do this now, right? Yeah. The reason why I'm making this so public, Tara, is because I know personally, there are scores of victims and these victims are not adults. They're children. They are not allowed to, their parents, God knows what else. If there's a genuine cause, and people watch, oh, well, I have been destroyed. I've been destroyed inside and oh, you still get to you know. I, I make a special effort for talk about it now. It could be that. But we still got put on the table. It could be just watching and calculating. As the, as Dharam Lal said in his, statement then no you got watch what this picture this was about a month after the rape and drama law pretended he, that, he, that he did not know me and threatened to fire me on one occasion because i refused to do unethical things regarding a project that i oversaw at the ministry i was the witness to embezzlement and i was expected to be a puppet i need to give people strength i need to give witness, uh, victims the strength to know that they're not alone and that there's no shame in what happened to them they need to reclaim their narrative and stay true to themselves and stay, stay true to the truth because every your dignity comes and goes, money comes and goes, but the truth always remains the same. And it's just so sad that we have women here in power who have who have made these women shells of themselves, these girls. Just it's just like they just have no empathy for their other for, for victims much less like women I, I need people to know i'm making this public i'm making this this is compromising towards me this is stuff i don't even delta 9 family we are experiencing some turbulences as we prepare for landing in the land of ireland powder one of the top ranking members of the leading ppp party in the middle of some very damning allegations do hit that subscription button as we prepare for landing one love this and i'm very uncomfortable i was very uncomfortable with the barrage of things he's asking me to perform with him after saying i'm after telling him i'm a gay female after multiple attempts to put my hand on his penis i get up and say i have to pee and immediately start to get dressed and make assertions that i have to be leaving soon i have no intention I had no intention of being in a business meeting with this man after the shock and humiliation I felt at the time. I tell him I'm leaving and proceed to go to the bathroom where I stay there for as long as I can and wash my hands and everything as good as I could. My mind was racing and I made a plan to get away from this man regardless of any business meeting. I was violated against my will by a man who exploited my situation and tried to entrap me in a compromising position, situation Sorry, due to my future contract with the ministry. I exited the bathroom and Dharam Lal is not pleased that I want to leave, but I was now fully clothed with my bag and phone ready to go, so he gets stressed. I see him reach over and retrieve a glock under the pillow and he forced me to lay on. And as he forced me to lay on as he did the deed, 
I scoffed at this because I knew he carried a firearm but did not know that it was under the pillow. I didn't wait for him to leave me out but started to walk downstairs and outside. I'm escorted to the front door where he stays and remarks that he wants me to lend him my car next time he comes to his pillow. I'm appalled with this man and start and start my car to exit the premises. The security hut at the Annie Regina State House had two guards who saw me come and go and they did not respond to me when I greeted them. At this point, I wondered, did they know that Dharma just had sex with me? Did they suspect? I go home and arrived there minutes before 11. I had no intention of letting my family know and I showered as soon as I entered the house, trying not to draw any suspicion but my family members were asleep. I was in shock and denial that Duran Lau, my future employer, raped me. To my further disgust, he sends a WhatsApp message shower at first, and I replied angrily and rhetorically that I did. He said that he doesn't want to shower and that he won't. And that he won't. I was flabbergasted at how disgusting Duran Lau is. My second physical encounter with him was an ambush very similar to the first time. This incident, however, occurred in 2021 before May when I was in contact with the Ministry of Local Government about non-payment of my contract, as well as a broken promise of a renewed contract for that year. I worked under the Ministry for two months, starting in November. This was about a month after the rape, and Jerome Law pretended he, that, he, that he did not know me and threatened to fire me on one occasion because I refused to do unethical things regarding a project that I oversaw at the Ministry. I was the witness to embezzlement, and I was expected to be a puppet. Via WhatsApp, Jarma offered to talk about my grievances in public over a business dinner, and I complied since our points of contact since September were professional and very minimal, thankfully. He picked me up from my residence in Oval with his government vehicle at around 1900 hours and makes an excuse to go to his residence, residence in Cummings Lodge, to retrieve something. I had my radar up, but I didn't think much of it. When we arrived at the location, it was gated and guarded, so I had to accompany him into the house. To my dismay, it seemed like something really bad had gone on there, and it was not in a habitable state. He apologizes to the state and says to come with him to some room, which was the bedroom. Now, like deja vu, he starts to proclaim, to proclaim that he wants my, my pussy and wants his way with me because he didn't get to do it last time. I know that the what Dharma was capable of, and the manipulation start, started again, and I am in the same, I was in the same position as before. I felt stupid, and I noticed Dharma was being very aggressive, and took my pants off after just asking me to sit on the bed. He wanted me to spread eagle and start to take out his penis. I don't remember seeing a condom or even seeing what he's going to look like. I immediately yelled that I'm not going to be raped, and that I'm leaving. He gets angry and his mood changed. He put his pants back on and his belt, then reached under a dirty pillow to retrieve a Glock once more. I stood my ground and asked him if he had a problem with people telling him no, to which he had no response. We quickly exited the house, got into his vehicle, and I directed him to my friend's house instead of taking me home, because I'm still shaken up from a second sexual encounter and ambushed by this man. My friend was Paul Ramsroof, where I unloaded my horrid experience to. I deleted Ramal's number swiftly and was never in contact with him again. I unequivocally state that Nigel Ramal sexually violated me and performed non consexual oral sex and finger penetration on me, and that he attempted to insert his penis in me on a second occasion during my employment and hiatus as an economic consultant at the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development. Ms. Premier Rupnarayan, the permanent secretary for the ministry, became aware of my experience in the station by an email in September of 2021, after which I was finally paid my salary. My rape report against Mr. Nigel Darama was made on May 9th, 2024, at the Coben John Police Station. I also have cyberbullying charges made against him on May 8th, 2024, at Sperndam Police Station and the Criminal Investigation Department. Overall, viral remarks homophobia and untruths of an inflammatory nature that were said by a live video feed and public posts on Facebook. That is the end.
I'm not hearing you wrong. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, uh, right. Travis Chase, like the news. Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry that you have to experience that, but I just have two questions and I don't want to bar you with questions. I want to leave that, give the man to reach his support. One, you said that when you went to an event state house, there was a gentleman there um, seated in the living room. If you see that gentleman today, you could recognize him. No, I cannot. He had, his, he, had his, he had his face down and he was eating. He did not look up to me, he did not even make eye contact. Very well, and how confident are you that, um, how much trust do you have in the police to deal with this matter? Those are just my two questions. None. They were scared to take my report. I don't have any confidence in them whatsoever. Thank you, too. You're welcome. Thank you for your questions. One love. Our sympathies go out to all those that are affected by this incident right here, by this very grievous allegation. Now, Guyana, if we allow this to be at the center of government, we are in danger. Guyana, if we allow this to be at the center of our government, regardless of which side it is on it is bad for government why because your neighbor is trying to take over the largest part of your country now you gotta contemplate on this the greatest time for you to try anything wouldn't it be when the house is divided wouldn't it be when there is scandal wouldn't it be when there might be elections coming up no there's a lot going on in this incident no we have to pay attention though, to what's going on at the center of government because remember this is a private incident between two people but it is occurring at the center of government why is it at the center of government this is not good for oil rich guyana right now this is not what it is and we, if we don't wake up as a people, then when the situation hit the fan and people think that they could do what they want in Guyana because people doing what they want in Guyana, then guess who got to blame themselves? We. This can't be at the center of government. It don't matter who is doing this. What's going on, buddy? Guyana can really sit and watch this thing go on and act like they don't see what's going on right here. Do we hear what's going on right now, buddy? Because persons got other things to say about it. And we want to hear directly what those things are. And we're going to get into some more information from... We're going to get into some more information from the alleged victim. She's going to give some more details about what transpired on that incident. Pada, look at the R. Kelly stories. People are there right there, you might be abused, a crowd of people, they hear and you left and got in a room, a crowd of people right there, you got in a room. And if in that room, if outside you was kissing the man and giving you a blow jab in front of everybody and in that room you said no and he forced himself on you, it's rape. That's how the system is. But these things, you got to look at thoroughly. You got to watch the timing. You got to watch who is this guy. Why now? Why a couple days after Congress when he deputy opened up? What, what, what happened? What happened? What motivates it now? But it is not up to you and me. If there's a genuine cause, people watch. Oh well, I have been destroyed. I've been destroyed inside, and oh, you still get to you know. I, I make a special effort for talk about it now. It could be that, but we still got put on the table. It could be just watching and calculating, as the as Damlal said in his statement. 
then now you got watch watch this picture what am i to to make of this what, what was this about again this is not recently this is way back but their associations if it is not a scheme then have you always been drawn to persons out there whoa, whoa, whoa. at this time this person is an, just an accuser and a thorough investigation has to be has to be done you don't want to make you don't want to vilify the potential victims out there or the victims out there right so let the law take its course a report has been made the police do a proper investigation all this information down there pick sense out of nonsense the information is out there She says she went to a job interview. So she has a <clears throat> no is very serious allegation. It should be investigated. And let the due process take part. Yeah. Look at blood. So she has a lengthy video. You see the video? Look for somebody saying that she said so because I haven't seen any statement. So it has to be this press conference thing we should have because I see a snippet of her saying something. So search for the video for me, get it up, and we could look at it and dissect it tomorrow. Because if thing coming out of she mouth, there's a different story. I now got the right to dissect that. Yes, yeah, sir. Guys, we did 11 minutes of our time. You guys take care. Peace out. Keep it real. We present what sides of the information so that you can hear. And then we know that we have a wise and educated audience. We know that we don't have followers over here. We know that persons that come here, they come to hear a neutral perspective on the trending topics that's going on in the country. I want you to leave a comment in the comment section and tell me if that is what you expected from the last person that was just commenting in this video. Let me know if you expected him to see that. And what are your perspectives on what's going on right here? If you haven't already, do remember to hit that thumbs up button. Yes, do remember to hit that thumbs up button so that you can stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. I'll catch you in the next flight. Great, um, well, uh, I think he is now on sort of, sorry, I don't know the terminology, but he's on the ruling party's I think he was recently elected, so I, I'd like to hear your response. Um, sorry, your first question was why I uh, wanted to do this now, right? Yeah. The reason why I'm making this so public, Tara, is because I know, personally, there are scores of victims. And these victims are not adults. They're children. They are not allowed to... Their parents... God knows what else. They're not allowed to, to voice their opinions. A lot of them have been silenced. A lot of them have had abortions. A lot of them have been physically abused of, in addition to being sexually abused. People are scared of retaliation. They're scared of whatever whatever kind of judicial um, kickbacks you're gonna have. The reason I'm making it is so public is because I need to give people strength. I need to give witness, uh, victims the strength to know that they're not alone and that there's no shame in what happened to them. They need to reclaim their narrative and stay true to themselves and stay, stay true to the truth because every, your dignity comes and goes, money comes and goes, but the truth always remains the same. And it's just so sad that we have women here in power who have, who have, made these women shells of themselves these girls just it's just like they just have no empathy for their other for, for victims much less like women I, I need people to know i'm making this public i'm making this this is compromising towards me this is stuff i don't even want necessarily to be out there but i'm putting it out there to let victims know you're they're not alone and that you could do this and be okay 
there are ways to go about this and I feel like we haven't had this yet. No victim was, was willing to actually put their name out there. People have aliases, they're trying to hide identities. I'm going put to the pedal. I don't care. I need I was wrong. I know what happened to me. No one's gonna tell me nothing happened. No one's gonna tell me that wasn't a crime. And I need I need all the victims to know that. I need people to come together. The hundreds of people I know that have made reports against this man need to come forward. And the fact, the second question, the fact that he is still on that party is mind boggling to me. Not just to me, to everybody else. It's something that I cannot make sense of. It is like the only reaction to insanity is an insane reaction. And it, it just makes me wonder like, is there a conspiracy here? Is there something else going on? Are they protecting Nigel because he is hiding secrets for them? What is going on? I've always been somebody who's very bold, someone who is not, I'm a, I'm a very sex positive person. And I don't think that you need, just because you've been sexually abused or you've had maybe abortions, I know people have had abortions because of this man. Your life is not over. There's always, 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 always gonna be light at the end of the tunnel once you stay true to yourself. And this country needs to have accountability on so many levels that we've never had before. And this man, Nigel, was he was being accused of rape years for years now by adults, by I think even by, by law enforcement, I believe. And he was getting pardoned. He was no one believed him. People were saying, Oh, so, I've heard from so many people, Nigel is such a good man. I never saw that. The man raped me. And every single person's testimony that I saw, it was the same thing. It was as though this man had a pattern that he would go with the Glock, with everything else. Ugh. It really, 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 really triggered me. And I, I'm doing this not just for myself. I'm doing this for the greater good. I'm doing this to change the country. The culture in this country needs to change. People need to start standing up and realize that people in power are stripping us of our rights to the point of gaslighting, to the point of victim shaming. And I'm putting my face out here because I don't want anything to be ambiguous. I need everything to be straight from me, from the source. That it's hard. Before, you, before you go, a lot of people have asked you why no. Um, you, you ever thought of taking this information to the opposition um, sometime before? They, they would have probably ran with it. And my, my last um, question... I have. My, and my last question before you go, um, have you ever been treated for any depression or mental illness before this incident? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the first question. When I was... Sorry, okay. go ahead. Um, I was diagnosed as bipolar um, when I was 19. And eventually it progressed into something more. Okay. Let me take an opportunity to thank you. Yeah. Can I have a final question, please? So she, you didn't, may. she didn't answer my first question. Uh, I'm sorry, what happened to the first question? Go ahead. I'm saying, what, uh, did, did, you, did you think, well, you said you weren't getting anywhere with the media. Um, have you, mm -hmm. and Mr. Damlan is a, a politically affiliated man. Um, have yeah. you taken this story to the opposition? Or have you thought about that before now? I did, I did, I did. What was the response from them? Um, they were supportive. It was just the uh, burden of proof was what the issue was. That was literally uh, the issue. Uh, Sarah. And we Sarah. tried doing protests before and nothing came of it. People, did we, protests were done by the opposition and we were actually told by the DPP to not protest. The DPP? So there were a lot of avenues that I took and a lot of blocking. That's what happened. And timing is everything. Um, people are saying, why now? Why not now? Hi, Sarah. If I may bench up here a final question, am I permitted? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for your bravery, Sarah. Um, uh, my question has to do with how do you feel? Maybe you touched on it briefly. But how do you feel with... Um, the party that is in office right now uh, protecting this individual and we have seen cases where they have protected another individual accused of um, molestation of little boys 
allegations that is that's been protected and in light of what the minister of education said um about um rape victims how how do you feel when you see these statements or read these statements and to see the manner in which uh, senior members of the uh, government uh, are out in public protecting individuals within the party, whether it's Nigel Daramlal or whomever, whether it's a Kwame, allegations level against them of uh, sexual um, misconducts. This is one of the influencers. That's how people get influenced. Look at it. Do you draw the she cast me body flat to? You understand? Some people go watch and say, oh, we got similar refugee body. So I like she, she like. 100% wild crafted sea moss. From nature, by natives. Why pay more?